and gentlemen. Thank you. It is a uh, pleasure for me to introduce uh, Dr. Botron to you today. Dr. Botron trained as a uh, general surgeon before joining the Faculty of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the University of Marseille in France. During the 90s, he became interested in the management of chronic perineal pain in women and worked diligently to better understand the pathophysiology of pudendal nerve pain. This led to the development of the surgical procedure known as pudendal nerve release. Dr. Botra is an extraordinary person, very down to earth, unselfish and generous, not hesitating to give up two weeks of his time to come to the Royal and teach us the procedure he developed. I also want to acknowledge uh, someone else very special, and that's Catherine Orban. Catherine is here today as a patient of Dr. Botron. However, she does not live in France. She is from Perth. A few years ago, Catherine went on a crusade to find a solution to her intractable pain. And she is the one who convinced me to join her on a trip to France to assist Dr. Boutron in her operation. And as the saying goes, the rest is history, and I'm sure this is the beginning of a very long collaboration between the two continents. May, not, may I now invite Dr. Boutron to give his lecture on chronic pain in women. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Charles Parson. It's a great honor uh, for me to let you uh, record our resort on the Pinovol Moragia. And um, special thanks, of course, to Cherry Van Kai and to Catherine Arubin, who uh, were the initiator of our new collaboration. And uh, without the avenue in France last year, uh, we won't be able to start this uh, uh, collaboration with our two teams. Here is the Montaigne Saint Victor, which is by our city or extra province. This is like a symbol of our city and well known for the painting of uh, uh, the famous painter Paul Cézanne. Chronic perfect and perennial pain is a difficult disease to treat, and we are always very embarrassed when we have to take care of this patient and probably not perfectly trained in our occidental studies to uh, treat and to manage this patient. Why this, uh, uh, this, this fact? Probably for many reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, probably a physical reason which is uh, coming from our occidental philosophy, which is uh, uh, based on reason and uh, uh, let all, all the, emotion, the emotional, all the, the pain from the pelvic uh, as uh, something uh, uh, uninterested. This patient gives us a high rate of frustration and it is it's a long term management. Also, one of the other important uh, reasons is probably the lack of consideration of the medical uh, community. Currently in the world, the usual uh, management of this patient is to try to find a usual reason and special gynecologist reason to the pain and by doing uh, ultrasound examination and laparoscopy. Uh, this, uh, in this case, when no reason has been recognized, most of the people don't want to refuse to, to consider an uh, unrecognized reason for pelvic pain. And they consider pelvic pain as an, an entity. Uh, is it really an entity or is it a lack of knowledge? If we consider pelvic pain as an entity and treat uh, pelvic pain as an entity, uh, then uh, this uh, leads to a low rates of uh, successful treatment, less than 10%. And all the patients one will carry on to uh, try to find other issues of their pain, and especially with now with the internet, they are going to analyze their symptoms, comparing their symptoms with other, other people, 
and they are going to do what we should do is that uh, uh, making a good diagnostic. And that's why sometimes they report that they have probably the right diagnostic. If we change our mind, and I hope we will, and you, I will convince you to change uh, your mind, and you carry on to better understand the unrecognized uh, and, and consider other uh, issue of pain, then that will lead to a better, more and more patient uh, treat. How to assess this patient? It needs to go back to work and to, uh, to uh, analyze again the symptoms of uh, most issues of the pain that we are going to analyze. Back to the traditional medical semiology because um, there is a lack of uh, good exploration or testing, fewer real or more additional exploration, and laparoscopy is rarely an option. This is, this is the race of diagnostic in our center, and as you can see, most of the uh, people are coming for pneumonia, but this is not in uh, no, no way a uh, frequency rate of the reason of, of peri and perineal pain. This is only the rate in our center, and we are not able for the moment uh, to really report the frequency of each of this reason in, uh, um, in the pelvic and perineal pain. As you can see in our uh, experience, we manage more, a lot of pneumonia, but also endometriosis, vestibulitis, interstitial cystitis, and each of these patients are screened first of all by uh, our team, and uh, the, the symptoms are analyzed. And when you are uh, when you are in front of a vestibulitis, you will have to uh, analyze special symptoms as uh, uh, vaginal infant pain, which is which is not the same pain as the pneumonia as we are going to. Uh, to, to see in a few seconds. So it is a very acute analysis of the symptoms which is going to, to drive you to the right uh, diagnostic. Pudonomoragia is probably one of the main causes of chronic peroneal pain and uh, the mechanism of the pain is very complex as you are going to see. All the reasons of the nerve damages are still unclear. The most common is the neuropathy due to pudonal nerve entrapment. To un better understand pudonal nerve entrapment, we have to come back to uh, an anatomical uh, report, and this is the, the anatomical. Uh, this is the, the report you have to, to the anatomical um, if report that you, you have to know to have better understand what's happened. In red, you found the piriformis muscle. In yellow, the sacrotubulous ligament, black, the sacrospinous uh, ligament, which made the effect of the clamp when there is an entrapment. The alcohol canal is constituted by the falciform process, which is an extension of the sacrotubulous in yellow, and joining the, uh, the internal, internal apparatus or aponeurosis. This is a lovely cadaver view from the inside, left inside of the pelvic. And uh, you can see the beginning of the uh, sciatica root, the sacrospinous ligament, and the pudonal nerve. The other very important um, thing to know is the three branches of the, of the nerve, which are the inferior rectal nerve, the perineal nerve, and, and the dorsal nerve of the clitoris. In pleuromyalgia and due to pleural nerve entrapment, um, the lesion is a focal myelinic lesion due to the entrapment at the, in this part of the uh, pleural canal, with a trunconal axonal lesion giving a focal neuropathy leading to inappropriate conductions. These inappropriate conductions give to the patient abnormal efferent conductions to the distal terminal branch of the nerve. And disruption in the afferent information, giving false information to the brain. First of all, the symptoms of the abnormal efferent conductions. It is usually neurologic pain, usually a burning pain, boring, sometimes the typical electrical shooting pain, which is a typical uh, neuropathic uh, symptoms, 
but some patients have also many other symptoms as stinging, darting, rarely a simple discomfort because usually uh, this neurovatic pain, pain is very sharp and sometimes excreting. Pain is usually increasing in sitting position and during the day. At night, people have spent a good night, there is no pain, and when they wake up in the morning, there is usually no pain, especially in pudolone nerve entrapment. But during the day, as long as they are sitting uh, during the breakfast and all day long, the pain is increasing. What is very important, sorry, is to analyze the site of the symptom and site of the pain, and especially to record if the pain is exactly um, recorded in the site of the terminal branch of the pudolone nerve. In order to analyze properly uh, the symptoms, you will have to um, learn the different territories of the terminal branches. Many authors have been uh, working on, the, on these uh, uh, territories, and uh, you will have to know that the inferior rectal nerve is uh, anal skin area, anus, rectal pouch, dorsal half of the anal sphincter. Perineal nerve has been uh, well uh, analyzed by Shafford and Beko, and uh, the site of this, the terminal, this, uh, this branch is perineal area, vaginal, labial area, ventral half of the anal sphincter, urethra, and probably also bladder, and, then, and you, will be, you will understand what the, 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 the consequence of this, uh, uh, this uh, discovery. We have been uh, report uh, the dorsal nerve of the clitoris, or dorsal nerve of the penis in men, in our, uh, in our previous report, uh, paper, and show that uh, the terminal branches are not only clitoris but also groin area and iliac area. This is uh, to show you the area of the inferior rectal nerve, of the perineal nerve, and of the dorsal nerve of the clitoris. The other type of pain are the pain uh, coming from disruption in the afferent information to the brain. The usual, usual one is the hyperostasia, dysesthesia. You can report abnormal clitoridium sensitivity. As one symptom is a very typical symptom of pedonomorgia, is the sexual arousal syndrome. I don't know if you've heard of it. Do you, do you know what the, the sexual arousal syndrome is? No. no. Um, it is uh, a sensation of uh, a sexual sens uh, it reminds it remind the patient the sexual sensation, but it's very uncomfortable and not um, pleasant at all. Uh, it can be uh, excitation sensation or orgasm sensation, but uh, in a tonality of, of pain. So it's difficult to recall this uh, sign, but it's also of high, uh, for high importance to uh, make the diagnostic. Disruption in perception of the reservoir is also important, and all patients are, are frequently far sensation in the rect rectum reservoir, like a uh, sensation of a foreign body, uh, or a uh, sensation of micturiation, or sensation of rectal feelings, and sometimes uh, the diagnostic is difficult with, for example, uh, overactive bladder, but the difference is uh, that there is nothing at night, because at night uh, the pressure on the nerve is uh, lower, and there is less uh, symptoms at night. All these signs are recorded for a diagnosis score that we used since uh, 2003, and uh, we have been published uh, that, uh, that, uh, that diagnosis score, which is, uh, has a good sensitivity of 86.7. We, we use major criteria and minor criteria. Our minor and major criteria are pain in two territories of the terminal branch of the nerve, compared to pain in territory of only one terminal pudon branch, which is a minor criteria. Why? Because if you record uh, pain in the one territory, for example the anus, it can also be uh, a, a disease of the of, uh, a proctological disease. But if you record a neuropathic pain around the anus and also a shooting pain to the clitoris, that is a major criteria of um, epidermal neuralgia.